let me welcome you to this lecture we have been discussing the chemistry of hydrides of boron and uh, during the last lecture we learned about a very special kind of bone that is present in these boron molecules that is about 3 center 2 electron bones and because of formation of such 3 center 2 electron bones boron atoms in boron molecules essentially become electron precise or they can acquire stable octet configuration even though boron atom itself does not have have only three electrons in the valence cell and that is why it is not capable of forming four conventional two center two electron uh, bones to acquire the octet electronic configuration so now the boron molecules or the or the structure of these boron molecules are essentially more diverse than the structure of hydrocarbons uh, and uh, the structure uh, of boron molecules are essentially based on polyhedrons like octahedron, decahedron or dodecahedron and in fact we will try to draw some of these structures uh, in the next lecture or so. But before we do that, uh, let us uh, try to learn a method which allows us to find out how many different kinds of bones are present within a given boron molecule by just looking at the formula of this boron molecule. So we have learned in the last lecture itself that apart from term, uh, this conventional 2 center 2 electron uh, terminal BH bones in boron molecules we have a BHB 3 center 2 electron bones as well as BBB 3 center 2 electron uh, bones are also uh, possible in case of higher borings. So this particular method which is uh, which was developed by William Lipscomb uh, essentially is known as uh, William Lipscomb what he did is that he developed uh, a way to calculate the number of different types of bones in the, in the given molecule and he uh, used a code known as the uh, Stikes number for a given uh, boron molecule to denote how many different types of uh, the bones are present within a given uh, boron molecule. So let us try to learn about the strikes number and how to calculate the strikes number of a given molecule, boron molecule and also if it is possible to predict the structure of a boron molecule by finding out the uh, strikes code of a given uh, boron molecule. So we will learn about the strikes code. As we have already said that the structure of these boron molecules are essentially based on polyhedrons. Now, uh, for in all of these boron molecules, essentially one uh, hydrogen atom is always attached to the boron center. One terminal hydrogen atom is always attached to the boron center and this particular bond is a two center two electron conventional covalent bone. Now, once the boron atom form such a 2 center uh, 2 electron uh, covalent bone it is left with only 2 electrons and 3 orbitals because once again if we look at the electronic configuration of boron this is the electronic configuration of boron and once it undergoes sp3 hybridization So we have this sort of a configuration and when one of these sp3 hybridized orbital forms a covalent bone with a hydrogen atom uh, 2 center 2 electron conventional covalent bond with a hydrogen atom that is a terminal hydrogen atom as we have seen in case of the diboron molecule the boron atom is essentially left with three orbitals and there are two electrons in these three orbitals. Now these three orbitals are going to be used now for formation of other types of bones present in these boron molecules and these bones as we have already said are BHB 3 center 2 electron bones, BBB 3 center 2 electron bones and as well as uh, it can also form a BH2 group. So this size code essentially is all about how many different types of these uh, uh, bones are present within a given boron molecule. So the number of 3 center 2 electron bones is 
given by essentially the code S here in the sites code. And the number of three centered two electron, sorry, this is the number of three centered two electron B H B bond that is denoted by the uh, symbol S here, and the number of three centered two electron B B B bonds are denoted by the symbol T over here and the number of 2 centered 2 electron B B bonds are given by the symbol Y here and fourth as we have already assumed that uh, to each of the boron atom in all of these boron molecules, there is always a terminal hydrogen is always attached. So apart from that, we can also have BH2 groups within a given boron molecule. So these BH2 groups are essentially, or these hydrogen atoms, or these number of two centered two electron BH bonds are denoted by are den denoted by the symbol X here, and these BH bonds are not coming from these BH bonds that we have already spoken about, or we have already assumed that that that, that, that is present within a given boron molecule. These BH are uh, these BH are essentially additional hydrogen terminal hydrogen atoms that are present apart from the one that is mandatorily present within a given uh, uh, bo uh, you know boron atom. Uh, in a boron molecule. So, the, whenever we talk about these BH uh, bonds or uh, essentially or two center two electron BH bonds, this means because on uh, because this means that there are BH2 groups are present within a given uh, boron molecule, uh, boron molecule, and this X is nothing but the number of essentially BH2 groups. So, this is all about the Sykes. Uh, number essentially so the size number denotes the number of different uh, types of bonds given a uh, you know, present within a given a uh, boron molecule and so the number of three center two electron bhp bond is given by the uh, symbol s three center two electron bbb bond is given by the symbol t while two center two, uh, two electron bb bonds are given by the symbol y and two center two electron bh bonds on and above the BH bonds that we have assumed that are already present within a given uh, boron molecule, boron molecule is essentially given by this symbol X, and X is nothing but the number of BH2 groups that are present within a given uh, boron molecule. So now we can write a couple of equations based on these by looking at the formula of a given boron molecule. Let us assume that we have a borane and we will write the formula of the borane molecule in this way. That is, we will, for each of the boron atoms, we will put a terminal hydrogen atom and let's assume there are P a number of such boron and hydrogen atoms, terminal hydrogen atom these are, and then on and above these. Um, PBH groups, we have Q number of hydrogen atoms in this boron molecule. So now, what we can write is that, or what we can write is, because we know that for each of these boron atoms, the, let us rewrite the different configuration of sp3 hybridized boron and this particular orbital is already used for formation of uh, two center two electron BH bonds. So we are left it with three orbitals uh, and there are two electrons in these three orbitals. So for formation or for acquiring stable octet configuration 
each of these boron atom needs to form one three center two electron bond. The moment it a boron atom forms one three center two electron bond, it will have stable octet configuration. So, so that means we can we know that the number of uh, stable uh, number of three center two electron bonds, I, whether it is BHB three center two electron bond or BBB three center two electron bonds, that is always going to be equal to the number of boron atoms. Uh, within a given boron molecule. So that is since in this boron molecule the number of boron atom is equal to P that we have assumed. So that is going to be equal to so P is going to be essentially equal to the uh, total number of BHB and PBB 3 center 2 electron bonds that are present within the given boron molecule. So because each boron, boron atom has to under uh, participate in only one three center two electron bone to form to acquire stable octet configuration. So that is that is why we can write P is equal to S that is number of BHB three center two electron bones and T that is the number of three center two electron BBB bones. So we can write this particular equation. Let's write this you know make it equation number one. Then also when we can uh, write, the second point is that we can write that these Q are the hydrogen atoms or which are not terminal hydrogen atoms or the, which are essentially hydrogen atoms, these hydrogen atoms are participating in either BHB 3 center 2 electron bonds or they are part of BH2 groups. So that is why we can write that Q or the total number of excess hydrogen atom that we have within a given boron molecule must be equal to the total number of BHB bonds that are present within a given molecule and the number of BH2 groups that are present within a given boron molecule and because that is equal to the number of excess hydrogen atoms or Q hydrogen atoms that are present within the boron molecule. So this is the second equation that we can write based on hydrogen balance over here. Then we can also write another equation based on number of electrons. So what is the total number of electrons pairs in this particular uh, boron molecule? So for we know or what is the total number of electron pairs that are available for formation of this polyhedral skeleton of the boron molecule because one of the electron of the boron atom is already used for formation of uh, two center two electron uh, covalent bond with the terminal hydrogen atom here over here and there are two electrons left for uh, or the each of these BH group essentially have two electrons and three or particles are present. So one pair of electron is available from each of these BH group. So that is P electron pairs we are going to be available from these P, P number of BH uh, groups, P electron pairs we are talking about. So that is for each of these BH groups there are two electrons. So for P uh, BH groups we will have P number of electron pairs. And then the number of electrons that are going to be available from these Q hydrogen atoms are essentially going to be equal to Q by Two or electron pairs is going to be equal to Q by 2 because each hydrogen atom has only one electron. So we will have Q by 2 electron pairs from Q number of uh, hydrogen atoms. So this is the total number of electrons which are essentially used for formation of the polyhedral skeleton in these uh, boron molecules. Now these the polyhedral skeleton is essentially formed by uh, these bonds, these 3 center 2 electron and 2 center 2 electron bonds that denoted by the code S, T, Y and X. So, because each of these bonds essentially involve 1, 1 electron pair. So, P plus Q by 2 or the total number of electron pairs available in the molecule must be equal to the total number of bonds or skeletal bonds formed within the given or a molecule, so that is equal to S plus P plus Y plus X because each of these uh, bonds essentially uses one one uh, electron pair, and that is why S number will, uh, you know, S plus P plus Y plus X will, uh, these are the total number of electron pairs used in skeletal bonding. 
So we have now accounted here accounted for all the electrons that are used for the skeletal bonding over here, and here we have all the electrons that are available for skeletal uh, bonding. So this p plus q by two must be equal to s plus t plus y plus x. So this is the third equation that we have. But we can do we can simplify it even further, and then you know put the uh, substitute p and q from equation one and two in equation three here. So s plus t plus s plus x by two here is s plus t plus y plus x, and this s plus t will get cancelled with this s plus t over here, and what we will be left with s plus x uh, is equal to two y plus two x here. So two y is going to be equal to s minus x. And from here we can write y equal to s minus x by two. Let's make it equation number four over here. So we have, and you know, we have established essentially four equations, or we have written four important uh, relations between the number of different types of bonds, that is, s, t, y, and x type of uh, or an, uh, as uh, bonds in a given boron molecule with the uh, with the formula of the given boron molecule. So now let us try uh, try to or let us learn how we can write this type score of a given boron molecule. So for this, what we will do, we will for writing this type score, we will follow the procedure. And this procedure essentially first what you do is that you write the uh, boron uh, in, in, in you know you write the formula of the boron in uh, this particular fashion that is you put the H uh, for each of these boron atoms you put one hydrogen atom and then uh, the excess hydrogen atoms you write it as a Q and then the next step what we do is that first step you write the formula of the boron in this particular fashion and in the second step you determine the value of s. Now the value of s there can be many possibilities or there can be several possibilities uh, for s uh, because the value of s is essentially greater than or equal to q by 2 and smaller than or e equal to q. How can we say so? Because if you look here, over here, q is equal to, from equation 2, q is equal to s plus x. So s is equal to q minus x. So from here, what we can say, if the x value of x is equal to 0, then s is going to be equal to q. And for any positive value of x, uh, value of s is always going to be smaller than q. So that is why we can write that s is always smaller than or equal to uh, q. Then we can also uh, we can also prove that s is uh, s must be uh, greater than or equal to q by two. For this, what we will do is that we will take this part of the equation here that p plus q by 2 is equal to plus s plus t plus y plus x. So what we will do is that we will substitute the value of s from here uh, in this particular equation, this is equation 3, so that will be equal to p plus q by 2, so that is q minus x plus t plus y plus x. So that is going to be equal to p. Let's take q by 2 on the, to the other side of the equation over here, and it is going to become q minus q by 2, which will be equal to q by 2. So minus x plus x over here will get cancelled out, and we will be only left with t plus y over here. So what we will do is now is that we will uh, substitute the value of p from here in this particular expression here, so that is going to be equal to s plus t is equal to q by 2 plus t plus y 
So then it tells us this T on this side of the equation and on this side of the equation will get cancelled out. So S is going to be equal to Q by 2 plus 1. So for uh, even Y is equal to 0, S is going to be equal to Q by 2. But for any positive value of Y, S is going to be greater than Q by 2. So this establishes that the value of S must be equal to or greater than Q by 2 and smaller than or equal to uh, Q itself. So uh, from by using this particular So the moment we know the value of Q that we can immediately do, the moment we have the formula of the Borden, we can write the formula in this particular fashion and then from here we can we can write different possible values of S for that particular uh, Borden molecule and then next for each value of S we determine all possible values of T, Y and X. Now we'll, this will give us a several strikes code for the same Borean molecule and we can rule out uh, the uh, strikes code or incorrect strikes code by following certain empirical laws. These empirical laws are essentially for rule out improbable Strike codes by using empirical laws are essentially developed by looking at the structure of different Borean molecules and then uh, looking at the strike code so that you know we can rule out or by we can tell which strike codes are going to be wrong for a given Borean molecule. So these empirical laws are essentially the strike codes must be positive. All the numbers in the, in the size code must be positive numbers because negative numbers are improbable here. So we can immediately rule out if we have a negative number that comes out uh, in, the, in the calculation of size code, then we can rule out that particular size code immediately. So negative should be ignored. The second point, our second empirical law says that, that all these uh, Borean molecules, they have two-fold symmetry. Or most of these Borean molecules have two-fold uh, symmetry is present and that is why uh, these two, when we can calculate this type code and then try to find out the structure of these Borean molecules, if it, uh, if, the, if the structure does not have two-fold axis of symmetry, then we can rule out that particular type code. So two-fold symmetry should be present. And then the third point is that if a particular uh, boron atom is surrounded by five other boron atoms in a given boron molecule, then the then it can participate in only one terminal BH bond and a no BHB 3 center 3, like it will not participate in any uh, 3 center 2 electron BHB linkages. So, if there are 5 boron atoms are surrounding a given boron atom like in a boron molecule, then only one terminal BH bonds are going, uh, is, it is going to form only one terminal BH bond. And uh, second point is that it is not going to participate or that particular boron atom is not going to participate in any 3 center 2 electron BHB linkage. So, 5 surrounding B atom, 1 terminal BH bone and no 3 center 2 electron 
BHV bond. So that is another empirical law. The fifth when the boron atom is surrounded by four uh, other boron atoms in a given boron molecule, then it can participate uh, in only one BHB or three center two electron BHB linkage. So four. surrounding B atom only one BHB linkage for that particular boron atom which is surrounded by four boron atom and then this is fourth and this is the fifth empirical law says that if a boron center is surrounded by only two boron uh, to other boron centers, then it is always going to participate in at least one BHB in case. So, two B surrounding B atom, at least one three center two electron BHB linkage. So, these are the Five empirical laws that we can follow to rule out all improbable strike scores because we will have several uh, possible strike scores. Uh, we, we will work out several possible strike scores for a given boron, a boron molecule, and that is why we need to rule out some of these strike scores by following these uh, empirical uh, rules so that we can uh, find out the correct strike score for a given boron molecule. So let us now try to find out the size code of a boron molecule or let us try to work out the size code of a boron molecule and for this we will uh, take diboron molecule as the example here that is B2A6 molecule. We will try to find out the size code of B2A6. So first in the first step what we have to do we have to write the formula B2A6 in this fashion. So there are only two boron atoms here. So, what we can write is that BH2 and then we are left with four other hydrogen atoms. So, P is equal to 2 here and Q is equal to 4 for divalent molecule. Now, from here again we can write different values of S because S is going to be Q by greater than Q by 2 that is 4 by 2 must be equal to that is equal to 2. In the second step, we write different values of S and so S must be greater than equal or equal to 2 or smaller than or equal to 4. So we can write different values of S and then we can tabulate different values of T, Y and X for different values of S here. So let us write different values of S that is possible 2, 3, and 4. These are the three values that are possible for S. Now the value of T we can find out by following uh, by using this equation over here. Because from here what we can write is that T is equal to T minus S we can write from this equation 1. So T is equal to P minus S and P or diboren is equal to 2, so that is equal to 2 minus s essentially. So, because it is 2 minus s, so where for, for when s value is equal to 2, so 2 minus 2 is going to be equal to 0, and for value of s equal to 3, is 2 minus s will give us minus 1, and for value of s equal to 4, is 2 minus s will give us minus 2. So these are the different values of t that we can calculate from these values of s and then we can also write the value of x from by from this equation over here because q is equal to 4 for diboren and we can write that x is equal to x is equal to q minus s. So q is equal to 4 so it is 4 minus s. 
uh, so when it is s is equal to 2, so x is going to be equal to 2. When s is equal to 3, x is going to be equal to 1. And when x is, s is equal to 4, x is going to be equal to 0 because 4 minus 4 is, is going to give us equal to 0. So now the value of y we can find out by following this particular expression over here because y is equal to s minus x by 2. So then s minus x, 2 minus 2, 0 divided by 2 equal to 0, 3 minus 1 that is equal to 2 divided by 2 it is going to be equal to 1 and 4 minus 0 divided by 2 that is going to be equal to 2. So these are the different side scores that we can calculate for B to A6 and now we have to use the empirical laws to rule out the improbable side score for a diagonal molecule and it is very easily we can say because these two set of side scores for diagonal molecule they involve negative numbers and because um, we have already said that as per the first empirical law itself that the side scores involving negative numbers are improbable and that is why we can rule out these two side scores for the diagonal molecule and the side score which is correct for diagonal molecule is this one that is 2, 0, 0, 2 is the correct side score for the diagonal molecule. Now this essentially tells us that in a diagonal molecule there are two B H B linkage and there are two there are no uh, zero uh, B B B uh, 372 electron linkage and there are a zero B B linkage and there are two B H2 groups in the diagonal molecule. So we have already discussed about the structure of diagonal molecule earlier and the experimental determined structure of the diagonal molecule we have seen. And it does match with the sites with the number of different types of bones that are predicted by the site score with the experimental structure of diagonal molecule because in the diagonal molecule we see that there are two BH2 groups that is given by the value of X over here, and there are two BHB 3 center 2 electron linkages, which is also given by the value of S for the divergent molecule that we have calculated here. And there are no 3 center 2 electron BBB linkage, or there are no 2 center 2 electron BB linkage, as the value of T and Y both are 0 and 0 for the divergent molecule. So, this is how we can calculate uh, the strike score for a given boron molecule, and we can also predict the uh, probable structure of a boron molecule by using the Stike score. And this essentially brings us to the end of this lecture. What we have learned during this lecture is a very uh, ingenious uh, method developed by William Lipscomb. That is, we have learned how to we can write the Stike score of a given boron molecule by just looking at the formula of a, a boron molecule and then following some few simple steps to find out the num num number of different types of bones present in a given uh, boron molecule and this essentially allows us to uh, predict the structure of a boron molecule in some of the cases. So uh, let me conclude this lecture with this and I thank you very much for being with me during this lecture.